On today's show, he is the longest running American gladiator. Please welcome Laser. <laughs> hey, thanks, Mike, for having me. I appreciate it, buddy. So, uh, been looking forward to this. We've had this set up for a, a little while now, and uh, just excited to, uh, to, to start your show and a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Welcome to the Mike Rand Show. And today's special guest is one of the original American gladiators, and he's the only one that's been there all seven seasons. Please welcome Laser. Hey, hey Laser, how are you? I'm doing great, brother. How are you doing? Good. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Yeah, you, you're welcome. And uh, I appreciate you inviting me. It's, uh, you know, we're, uh, it's it's kind of unique lately. We're getting a little bit of buzz on the uh, uh, on the front end, basically with you know people trying to uh, come out of the woodworks and doing some interviews. We just got done filming uh, a Netflix documentary, so I'm not sure if uh, that has something to do with it. And the buzz is uh, circling around uh, the wagons there. But uh, yeah, thank you. I appreciate uh, you reaching out to me. You're welcome. So American Gladiators was one of my favorite shows growing up. So we're gonna have a great time today, everybody. We're gonna talk all about American Gladiators, but first we're gonna get into a little bit of back history, backstory of um, my guest here today. So you were actually born and grew up in Montana. That's a state I don't think I've said in a long time, the word Montana. <laughs> being well, you know the, what they say about Montana. <laughs> being from the East <laughs> Coast. <laughs> Well, you know, you, you, you probably haven't said it in a while, but the news is sure covering it lately with all the floods that are happening there. And, you know, I still got family and, and uh, tons of friends there in Montana. It's amazing. I don't know if you've watched the news lately with the flooding of that Snake River, but I was on that river just a couple of years ago uh, with some friends of mine uh, fly fishing. So uh, it really hits home. It's really devastating to see that's that occurring in Montana and uh, poor folks losing their homes and businesses and, you know, the economy in that area is really going to hit be hit hard. It's, it's really sad to see, but, uh, yeah. uh Montana besides, uh, the destruction that's happening right now with the heavy rains and the, you know, the melting snow, it, it's one, one heck of a place to, uh, at least go visit if you're not too afraid of the cold. So anyhow, <laughs> <laughs> So in high school, you played football and then I you sure played did. college football as well. So tell me a little bit about that. And sure. so you played for Montana State University, correct? I did. I, you know, I, I did every sport in high school. Uh, I boxed, wrestled, track. Uh, by the time I was a junior, I ended up, uh, uh, except for boxing, you know, I ended up quitting all the other sports except for wrestling really to focus on football. My, my goal was to, uh, to get into the NFL, even being young back then. Uh, we all have dreams of playing professional football. Uh, and fortunately, that, that dream became a reality later on and after my career in, at, at Montana State. But uh, I was a running back in high school. Uh, I led the, uh, uh, the state of Montana in, in total uh, rushing yardage uh, my senior year. And I graduated about 200 pounds and I had quite a few scholarship op opportunities uh, outside of Montana, I, Montana State, University of Montana. And, but I decided to stay at Montana State. It was, you know, just leaving Montana just wasn't a, a goal of mine. And um, I was recruited by University of Montana, which is the Grizzlies and then Montana State, the Bobcats went to both schools and just had one heck of a uh, recruiting trip to Montana State. Loved the head coaches, Sonny Lubick, and uh, I just fell in love with it. And I uh, uh, started my career as a, uh, as a uh, fullback 
and uh, traded uh, time with another guy my freshman year and my sophomore year. I ended up starting uh, at fullback. And then lo and behold, spring season came around. We were doing winter conditioning with a brand new coach by the name of Doug Graber. And he pulled me aside during winter conditioning and says, boy, you got one one heck of a mindset. I don't think you need to be on the offensive side of the ball. Why don't we try you out at uh, linebacker? Are you interested? I said, yeah, let's do it. And wow, just changed the whole landscape of football for me. You know, I, I didn't have the speed to get into the NFL, obviously as a running back uh, in that, that mindset of just never surrender, kick some fanny and and never take no for an answer. And it, I just flourished at inside linebacker and broke all kinds of records my junior year and, uh, and did really well my senior year. So that's how all that started. Yep. And then eventually you were drafted by the USFL. That's correct. Uh, it, it was the brand new league uh, in 1984. The uh, United States Football League came out and I was drafted. Uh, they, they drafted two inside linebackers. Uh, my agent at the time was Ken Standager out of Montana. He represented a lot of the uh, uh, college players that went into the NFL and uh, just a great agent. But, you know, this new league, I, I was drafted by San Antonio Gunslingers. They never even ended up calling me uh, for two weeks after I was drafted, which my agent said that was kind of a red flag. He suggested and kind of pushed me along and said, hey, let, let's not have you go to the USFL. I think you'll get drafted in the, uh, the NFL. Unfortunately, I did not. I had a, a terrible senior year. I missed four games due, due to a pretty bad ankle injury. And then uh, our, our team only went one in 10. So we didn't get the notoriety with all the scouts coming out. And uh, uh, it, it, I'm going to fast forward a year because all my roommates, Kirk Timmer, John Kenna, Lonnie Burt, all these guys that I lived with were all juniors and uh, sophomores and juniors. And the next year, those guys at Montana State <laughs> won the national championship. And I kicked myself in the fanny because I wish I would have, I could have gray shirted my senior year because I missed those four games. But I went in on the fourth quarter of that fourth game that I had missed. Had I not gone in, uh, I would have gray shirted and had that extra year of eligibility and been on that uh, uh, national championship team. But, you know, who knows what would have happened if that would have occurred. I, maybe I wouldn't have ended up in California from Montana and, and tried out for American Gladiators. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, you wish, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but it is what it is, right? Yep. And then you eventually did get in, you got into the Kansas City Chiefs, correct? Yeah, I did. I, you know, I, I, I made the team, got hurt the very first game and they cut me and went back home. I had another two quarters left of school uh, to graduate. I went back to Montana State, went for another quarter. Um, and then I signed for with Toronto Argonauts up at the CFL, Canadian Football League, and went up there with Bob Obilovich, who was a, uh, out of Butte, Montana, and he was the head coach at, at, uh, uh, at Toronto and went up there and played for a year. It, it was unfortunate because they switched me to outside linebacker and just – I had no interest in playing outside linebacker and it, 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 it kind of, it, it didn't do myself justice, but that's where they put me in. And unfortunately with the rules up in Canada, they can only have so many injured Americans on the injured reserve at one time. And if they get too many, they have to trade you to other teams. And it just wasn't my idea of playing professional football. So they had sent me home uh, twice on uh, that same year, same season, and they called me back up and I just, that wasn't my idea. So I, I stayed there in Montana and then got into bodybuilding because uh, I needed something to fulfill my everyday excitement to go to the gym and work out. And, you know, it was uh, one of those times in my life where I just really uh, got into working out and bodybuilding and 
and, uh, and then I ended up in California and that's another story. So uh, we can go from there, but yeah. <laughs> and he wound up winning Mr. Montana, correct? Yeah. I, you know, I did all that, did all that kind of crazy stuff. And geez, I got up to like 260 pounds. My, my playing weight uh, as a linebacker was about 225. When I was up in Canada, I was down to 220 because all they, they run your fanny off, you know, your three downs and out. So uh it was uh, one of those times in my life that, you know, I enjoyed it. Uh, it, it. You know, my my entire life, all I cared about was playing football. That's all that mattered to me. Um, and uh, fortunately, I was in the right, you know, the timing was correct. You know, the, the NFL went through that, um, the strike season in 1987. And I ended up in California from Montana. I went out there and, and got a full-time job. It was really my full-time job job after after graduating and I uh, was at a downtown athletic club that I was hired with um, and I received that job from a, my grandfather's good friend Duke Llewellyn and he offered me a job and I moved to California. I was with that job for about two months and my agent said hey the Rams are looking for a linebacker what do you think? I said let's do it. I quit that day and joined the Rams and I met Dan Clark who became Nitro him and I became best of friends and became roommates for three and a half years. And again, uh, was injured. I first play of the game. Uh, we were in the Superdome playing the saints and a guy just happened to catch me just perfectly on the end of, uh, end of my arm here on the elbow and just crushed everything. It just, I crushed my larynx, fractured uh, my scapula, some ribs. I punctured a lung. That was end of my playing days. I, I was that was that was it. It took me almost three years from 1987 until the time I tried out for the Gladiators in '99 uh, to heal up from that injury, and uh, it, it was devastating to say the very least to know that that career that I loved so much was over. Yeah. So basically, then you tried to get into acting and did some modeling, correct? And yeah, I did all that goofy that stuff. That stuff. And now modeling and <laughs> acting and, you know, Dan and I, we, you know, we were, and, and I want to, but Dan and I lived off my money, basically <laughs> off the gladiator. Well, I, I, I received a settlement from the Rams, you know, and we were doing a hot bod contest to make a few extra bucks. I was a limo driver. And then we started doing some acting together and doing commercial work and, and getting casted as extras on different TV shows. And we were just having a heck of a time uh, and, and having a really good time doing it, not making much money. You know, it's, as you know, being an actor, it, it few and far between when you get a gig, it's great, but then it takes six months to grab another gig and you're poor, right? You're broke. And yep. It was fun. We we were living down in Orange County in California, Dan and I, and had apartments. And um, we finally decided if we were going to make uh, a serious go at this, that we needed to be up in the Hollywood uh, scene. So we moved up in Studio City, which is, uh, you know, the Valley in California. And we just started going out on, and I started doing really well. I, I was landing a lot of national commercials, doing very well. Um, and then, uh, the gladiator said the tryout and the rest is history. <laughs> yep. And I do have to ask you, what do you remember? What got you your SAG card? Yeah, I was, uh, I did a national commercial for Coors Light and they were filming five different commercials. Uh, and I got casted when I was in the, they went down to Virgin Islands and shot this, uh, the five commercials for a week and a half. It, it was so beautiful. I mean, it was just, you know, uh, and I was in one scene running down the beach and they put that spot in four out of their five commercials. And I just kicked butt. I mean, I couldn't wait to go to the, to, to the mailbox every day. There'd be a check after it. I mean, it was, I, I made a mint off that off the four commercials of Coors Light, but that, that got me my SAG card and I was on a roll then. Yeah. Yep. That, that card's not easy to do. I, I never got a SAG or after card, 
Yeah. I almost got, I could have done a waiver and I didn't do it. I was an extra in the film Sleepers back at the time. Were you? With, with, with a few unknown names, maybe you might've heard of them now. Brad Pitt, <laughs> yeah. Robert De Niro. I've never heard Peter of them. Reagan, Who are they? <laughs> Dustin Hoffman. But yeah, I, I never got mine. Yeah, it you know, it is difficult to get. And uh, the great thing about the Gladiators, which was after, that was the other union, and I did all the commercial work through SAG. Fortunately, I, I, I have a pension through both of those unions, which I'm very fortunate to have, right? And whoever would have thought, I mean, I was just doing it for fun. And lo and behold, because you have to get so many years uh, uh, that you make X dollars to, to get a, a full retirement. But yeah, at least I, I, I have a pension with both those unions, which is really nice. So then that brings us to American Gladiators. So tell us how you got cast in American Gladiators. Yeah, so Dan and I were living together, uh, Nitro. Um, and Dan and I had the same commercial agent and theatrical agent. Dan got a call from our agent. Uh, and I, I was not aware of this. So Dan had tried out for the Gladiators. Uh, and I, I can't recall why I wasn't, uh, or did not receive that casting call from my agent. My thinking is Dan didn't tell me, I'm going to burn him again. I think Dan did not tell me about the commercial audition that our agent told him to tell me about. So anyhow, he tried out and made the show because there's 20, there's right around 26 episodes for one season. So Dan got casted uh, for the first season and this was 19... 99 and he he was on 13 episodes and then there was Malibu well they stopped production and Malibu just wasn't holding his weight um so they stopped production and wanted to cast a new American Gladiator so my agent called and said hey you know the Gladiators I said of course Dan's on the show he's the guy that never told me about the audition so uh I tried out for the Gladiators and lo and behold, I made the show. So I missed the first 13, but it, I was part of that first season. And then I was on, I was on more T uh, programs, TV episodes than any other Gladiator in the seven years. Yeah. I made all seven seasons. So at 1989, you had said 99, just want to correct oh, that. I'm sorry. That, <laughs> 89, sorry. I did say 1999. That's, that's a mistake. My, my, my brain is going, I'm getting older, but yeah, 1989. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, it's funny, Mike is I had a, I had a really tough choice to make because at the time I was, I had, um, signed up to be, uh, in the LAPD as a police officer. And I went through all of the, the physical testing, the background testing, the background check, and I was accepted to the January 1990 Academy to be a police officer. And when my agent called early January and said, hey, you just got casted as one of the new American Gladiators, I really had to make, it was a tough decision because it took me a little over a year to get accepted into the LAPD and I wanted to start a career, I had a family, um, but here we go again, <laughs> athletics or working, right? <laughs> like working at a desk job or whatever. And so I, I had to make that decision again and uh, athletics, I mean, I, they were both, I had to show up the week after for LAPD or show up to be on the American Gladiators TV show. And I opted to go for American Gladiators, which I think I made the right decision. So. Yeah, so I could have been a part of the police department with LAPD for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us what it was like on the American Gladiators as far as training. So I heard that there was no training in the beginning. Is that true? It, in terms of training for like physical training, uh, uh, weight training, things like that. Yeah. You know, all, all of us did it on our own anyhow. So, you know, we didn't have a a, uh, a venue where all of us would go train uh, year after year, it, except for 
A, a few years later, when the show was established, uh, we hired a gentleman by the name of Jamie, who was the strength and conditioning coach, I believe it was for U, uh, USC. And in the summers, we would meet Jamie and a bunch of the gladiators, and we would do a lot of training there at the facility. And it it really helped. Uh, but, you know, for most of us, we, we did all of our own training on our own. Uh, I mean, I used to work out like an animal. I mean, it was, you know, doing uh, basically four days and doing everything I could to be in the best possible shape. You, you're talking going to the weight room, doing cardio, doing aerobics, uh, doing plyometrics, you, you name it, I did it. Uh, and it was just part of who I was. And nobody had to, to motivate me to, uh, to train each and every day. Now, American Gladiators was hosted by Mike Adamley, who was there all those seasons as well. Yeah. I do want to take a little bit of time to just uh, mention the co-hosts and just kind of ask if you know maybe why they kept going through the different co-hosts. Um, yeah, you know, and every sorry couple about years. that noise. I just got an email here. Um, you know, I, nobody can hold a candle to Mike Adamley. What a stud. I mean, that guy is just a, a very smart individual, very articulate. Uh, memorization is off the charts. Uh, he was just unique. And I think they just couldn't find someone to hold the candle to him. I mean, they had Larry Zonka, which was, he was awesome. I don't know. You know, a lot of us were young men, you know, I was 28 yeah. years old. We didn't, we didn't ask questions. We were just happy to have a job. We didn't, we didn't know why some people came and went. Uh, you know, we had Mike uh, Christensen, another uh, host. We had, uh, um, geez, uh, Lisa Miloski. Uh, I mean, there were so many different. And, and then we had Nitro. I mean, Nitro was one of the hosts yeah. and he did excellent. I mean, yeah, he was great. I mean, wow. He, I mean, just a magnificent host. He was very, very good at it. Um, and then we had Joe Theismann. Uh, he was on, but Mike Adamley, he, he was the man, the myth, the legend. And he was also our host uh, during the live event when we took the American Gladiators out on the tour for six months. He was on that too. And he, he's just, yeah, I don't think anybody could come close to Mike as far as being a just an upstanding guy and just a great host for the TV show. Yep. And then um, there were so many gladiators over the years as well. I'm just going to name some of your um, fellow gladiators here that you worked with on the men's side. You got Nitro, Gemini, Titan, Turbo, Tower, Saber, Hawk, Thunder, all these great gladiators. I want to ask you, who were some of your favorite gladiators to work with and who were you yeah. like best friends with on the show? Yeah, there's another one you missed, Cyclone, who was Barry Turner. Uh, and just Barry Turner had uh, a very successful protein, uh, Lenny and Larry's Cookies, which he started that company. So um, some of my, you know, Steve Hanaberry Tower, we were best friends before the show started. We were best friends during the show. We still are today. Um, he, he was really my all-time favorite as far as someone, my buddy, you know, that I hung out with. We were very close. Um, Dan and I, I mean, there wasn't, a, and then there was Thunder, Billy Smith. Unfortunately, Billy, you know, he passed away last year. Uh, he and I were very close. Um, Galen Toms Tomlinson, who was Turbo. Um, all these guys. I mean, we, we were just, just a great group of guys um that you would want to hang out with and outside the outside the show i mean we, we were all good friends and and then lee rareman uh hawk um unfortunately he passed away very sad i mean he and i were very close we we kept in touch throughout the years even after the show ended and um so i to be honest with you, i mean there, there there wasn't one gladiator that i wouldn't say i wasn't friends with which is really cool. And now I got to ask, did you ever get injured on the show? Oh boy, that's a bad, <laughs> did I get injured? Oh my gosh. I got more injuries on that TV show than all the years of playing every sports, all the sports that I was involved in. I've had since, well, when the show was airing in the seven, eight years, I had, eight or nine surgeries. I had a surgery every year and mostly it was shoulders, uh, complete 
rotator cuff tears that I had for, uh, you know, arthroscopies, open ro rotator cuff surgery, uh, surgeries on that. And then after the show ended, I, geez, I've had, because of all the injuries, I've had to get multiple shoulder in surgeries again, because they keep tearing because there's just nothing left of the tendons. Um, I've had, though, I think uh, 14 to 16 surgeries from the TV show and uh, and I'm feeling it today. I just turned 60 in February. So, uh, I, I, I feel, I feel 60. <laughs> I don't know what 60 is supposed to feel like, but I certainly feel it. Uh, I feel old some days. And now how did you get your gladiator name? Was that given to you or did you get to choose that name? No, I, I came up with the name. We, nobody could figure when I tried out on the second part of uh, the first year, um, we were all up in the stands and Julie Rush was there, one of the uh, producers, and nobody could come up with a name. And all of us, the gladiators were there, a bunch of the producers were up in this, this, this small little stadium uh, where we were filming. And, and I just was thinking what was quick, fast, could strike you quicker than anything and put you down. And I just said, how about laser? And Everyone was like, oh, my gosh, you just hit the mother load. That's your name, Laser. That's how it started. So and, and it stuck. So I, I think I, I, who, I and I think it was me. I don't know. I mean, it, 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 it was a, good, a pretty good name. I think it kind of uh, it, it had that ring of uh, lightning quick, fast, uh, put you down. And uh, so it stuck. And uh yeah, it was a pretty good move. Yeah. Now, there were so many great events on the show. I'm going to name a bunch of them right now. So I'm going to go one by one. And I want to know what your favorite memories are of that one. But first, actually, I want to ask you, what was your favorite event to do? Bobby Joust. Um, I just loved it. It was just me and that other person, that contender. And I got to be pretty good at it. And I, I just loved it. It reminded me of boxing. Um, and I loved boxing growing up. My dad was a boxer and I just loved it. And it, it was, you know, you were off, you were 10 feet above the air and on this little pedestal. And, and if you were victorious and beat the contender, you were up there by yourself and, and doing high fives with <laughs> to yourself saying, uh, great job. And so, yeah, I just loved it. It was, it was a good feeling. Now you did once say on the show that you would never lose an event twice. Yeah. And I want, that's laser's rule. And I want to know how many times did that rule actually get broken that you did lose an event? Boy, you know, obviously I'm only human. I did lose, <laughs> but not too often. I, I, I don't think I ever lost twice in a row on joust. I can tell you that or the conquer ring. Uh, I, I love the pyramid. Uh, if you remember the pyramid, it was just another, wow, just exhilarating to be, you know, top of the, the pyramid and then throwing these guys off and you're bouncing down at the bottom. But uh, yeah, I don't, and, and then there was whiplash, you know, with the dog bone, uh, another tough event. Boy, that would rip your, your shoulders right off. But uh, I love that event. I mean, I would have to, uh, uh, eat crow. If, if someone can show me where I lost twice in a row, uh, you, you might have to remind me of those days. But uh, of course, I lost every once in a while, but uh, I don't think I ever lost twice in a row. That's for sure. And Powerball was one of my favorites. What is yeah. your memories of Powerball? Oh, uh, get down and dirty, baby. And it, that was a fun, fun. That was just fun. I mean, that brought back football to its entirety, uh, you know, to, to be able to tackle guys at full speed with no helmets. I mean, we didn't have any pads on basically. They had the, uh, in, in the beginning, we had no helmets. Uh, and, the, and then two years after they realized too many people were getting concussions. So maybe we should put a little headgear on you. But it, it was fun because you had yourself, but you had two other gladiators and we would have a series of, of, I wouldn't call them plays, but they were schematics of as far as what we were going to do um, and how we were going to 
take on the two contenders. And it, it ended up working out pretty good. Uh, that event, I loved having Turbo and I out there um, just because, I mean, that guy's an animal. I mean, of all the gladiators, most of us had played professional football. Galen was just a true athlete. Um, it, it, people ask me even today, who do you think the best athlete was on that TV show? I, I mean, obviously, I, I would have to say I was there, but I, I, I think overall, Galen Tomlinson, who was turbo, that guy was a stud. I mean, he mentally tough, um, just a great athlete. And uh, uh, yeah, so <laughs> I'm just thinking, you know, when you, we do these interviews, you forget, I mean, this show was 30 years ago and you forget all the nuances that happened, right? And then you, you talk about it and it really kind of puts a tear in your eye and a little smile in your face to know that you had, an, uh, you had such a place in history and being such an iconic show. Uh, it brings back a lot of memories. So yeah, that's why I'm smiling so much right now. It's like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then another uh, favorite one is the assault. Yeah, I just, you know, being from Montana, I'm, a, I'm still a big outdoorsman. I hunt, uh, you know, and that's how we do it in Montana there. That's what I'd say. But it, it was fun. It just wasn't, man, I like to get down and dirty and wrestle and beat people up. And, you know, you, you hit someone with a tennis ball that's going 110 miles out of a gun. It was fun, but it wasn't my favorite event by any means. <laughs> and then the wall, climbing that wall. How about that one? Yeah, the wall, it, that, that was technically challenging. Uh, I, I got to be pretty good at it. Uh, it was it was fun. It, was, it, it took a lot of practice. Uh, you know, when you're 230 to geez, take Thunder, who was 310 pounds or Gemini, these guys were massive. And to be able to, you know, to do your foot hand placement and to be able to climb up something like that, being as heavy as these guys were, even though they were true, I mean, really good athletes, pretty tough on the, you know, on the bigger, bigger guys doing it. You know, I was one of the smaller gladiators of all of them. Um, you know, being 230 pounds, um, I think my last year I was down to about 222, but uh, pretty difficult event if you're a larger human being. And human cannonball. I hear that was not a favorite of the gladiators. <laughs> that was no one's favorite. That, that thing beat up and, and broke more bones than you could imagine. Can you imagine having a human being 200, 250 pounds swinging like a pendulum and you're just a sitting duck and with this little forearm shiver pad. It's like, seriously, come on. I think the producers and directors, whoever came up with that silly game had lost their minds. <laughs> <laughs> and Breakthrough and Conquer. I love that one. That was a fun one. Yeah, it was, it was a good one. I mean, I love the conquering, man. That's just... You, you and that other individual and that, that guy, that contender is trying to get you out of that small circle. I loved it. It was just, ooh, in, I mean, it was, man, I'd fight tooth and nail to stay in that thing that, you know, the, the uh, breakthrough, it, it was football, but let me tell you, the, these guys had a running start that had 10, 15 yards head start and you're a sitting duck. And, you know, it was a, it was a great event if you played linebacker, right, or DB, because you had to be on your toes because these guys had a full run at you. And uh, uh, that was another event where a lot of people got injured was the breakthrough, just because uh, of the momentum that these contenders were carrying to get to the goal line. Hang tough. Hang tough. I loved it. Oh, you bring on all these favorite games. I loved Hank Tuff. That was, uh, I practiced and practiced. And I, it, it was another one of those events that for a smaller contender or a smaller gladiator, which I obviously I was, uh, it, it just, it, 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 was, it was calling my name basically. And uh, I, I loved it. It was, uh, you had to be pretty athletic 
couldn't let your momentum slow down um, and had a lot of fun with that game too. It was uh, one of my favorites. Sky track. Oh my gosh. Don't mention that game. I hate that game. I hate it. I hate, not only do I hate it so much, <laughs> I almost quit the show because it, you know, being upside down, I have a tendency, my equilibrium, if I'm doing, if, if I turn my head too fast or I get dizzy and I did it for the first couple of times and I was literally nauseous most of the day. And I finally went to the producers and directors and said, listen, I'll do anything. You just can't put me up on that sky track any longer. Um, and if you know, if you watch the seasons and I think that game was on maybe three, three years, three seasons, I was maybe on it twice. And after that, you'll never see me on it again because I literally, I, I, I told them, I said, if you make me do it, I might be out of here. That's how serious I was, how bad I did not like that event. The gauntlet. Ah, another great one. You know, you know why this event was great? Is you had all of the gladiators that were on the team. There was either four or five of us, depending on the year, right? But the year where we had five gladiators, five males or five females, it, it was just such a team effort. We'd all have different apparatuses uh, to stop the contender from running from one end of the tunnel to the next, to the end of the tunnel, uh, to get through us all in a matter of, I think it was 20 seconds, 15. I, I can't recall what the time was, but it was just a, an uplifting event if we could stop the contender from making it from the start to the finish. And it was just exhilarating because you felt like a team, right? And it, it, that was, as far as a team unity uh, event outside of Powerball, that was the main game right there. The maze. That was a pretty cool game. Hey, you bring them all. The maze. I haven't heard that. Uh, that was a cool. That was cool. Uh, you know, it, it was just fun. Uh, you know, sneaking around with those little those pads and waiting for the contenders to come by you, and and half of them would pass you so fast that you were just left standing, going, "Really? You just?" I, I didn't even get a pad on you. So it, it was pretty cool. It was, it was a fun game. And then the, every show ended with the Eliminator. Yeah, the Eliminator. That, that was boring for all of us. Let me tell you why it was boring. It was the end of the night. And, you know, we had long days of filming. You know, uh, most of us lived an hour away from where we filmed, which is Universal St Studios and Mary Tyler Moore Studios. Or, you know, you had to be there, I think, starting at 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning. But we wouldn't end almost until midnight and it was long days. So the, the thing about it, you would know what events you were on that morning. The producers would give you what events you were in. The, if you were on the, uh, the eliminator, then you had to stay. And that was an extra hour and a half to two hours at nighttime because they had to, they had to put all the equipment together. They, had, they roll equipment in, they roll it back in, put it all together. So there was a lot of downtime putting that massive event into the studio. So if you were there, you had to stay an extra two hours. If not, they let the, the gladiators end up going home early. So it was like, oh, geez, I'm on, the, I'm on that darn event tonight. I got to stay till midnight. So uh, I, it was boring. It was kind of boring for us, but great for the contenders. Now, a lot of it, too, was filmed out of order, correct? Like you would be filming several shows at it, once. Is that true? That's correct. We'd always do two shows, sometimes three. Uh, depends on if we had a, um, a special uh, episode, like uh, we'd have LAPD or uh, um, we'd have the Los Angeles uh, Police Department, the Fire Department. We had the Olympics come in. We had ex-NFL guys come in. Um, so what, a lot of times they would film season one, but different episodes, like the first contenders that go up against each other, they would do the second set of contenders, and that might be episode uh, 11. So it, it was just hit or miss. I mean, you know, us as gladiators, it didn't bother us. I mean, we were, we were in, you know, all of the events um, and all the episodes. 
So it really didn't matter to us as, as, as long as we were being seen on TV. You know what, Laser? We've said so much, but we have so much more to say. We, I got to invite you back. Will you come back? Oh, come on, Mike. You know that. I'll be right here for you. <laughs> We'll do we'll do the second half the next forty five minutes. Yeah, we're we're we're, we're going to have to do a second half, guys, because this this thing you know we're we're going to make you wait. I don't want you guys to wait, but you guys got to wait to the next episode. So <laughs> thank you for joining us here today, Laser. Oh, you you know it. You know, hey, it takes a long time to fit to to get everything in for 60 years you know so yeah, I, mean, I'm I mean when you're the now, longest, so when you're the longest running gladiator on the show you got a lot to say here so <laughs> right. tune in next time guys to so come back and we'll talk to you all soon bye everybody yeah